Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Hood Table one more again. Come on, hoodies. Make sure y'all drop down. Get your eagle on in the chat. Also, make sure you like and share the video. And, of course, if you are new here, please feel free to subscribe to the Hood Table and hit the notification bell, as well as the membership. We do have members. Um, I think the lowest tier is $2.99. But, yes, if you want to become a, an official hoodie to the hood table please feel free to hit the membership button let's move on right along move up, Cletus. wendy wendell bartholomew oh, right yeah. oh yeah y'all yeah billy bartholomew cleophas earl wendy cleophas earl yes wendy williams with your stinking ass well, girl let me tell you something you are too old for the shenanigans you should, if you're doing good and you're rehabbing, keep at it. But you got to let the I don't know what you you girl, you didn't let these folks just take all you they trying to take all your little change, take them, then shut down your fame and gave your show to somebody. And I last I heard, is it even still on? No, no, her see, show is not on. See, see what I'm saying. You gave him oh. shit. You all that made a donkey well, out of shit. It became Sherry show. Okay, but y'all didn't change. Oh, like that's that. right. Sherry took over and then it became a Sherry show. I forgot all about that. I didn't when know she that still on? Sherry just oh. took her show. No, oh, but you I know she... Sherry was given a show. Okay, but is she still on? But hold on, hold on. Let, let me make sure. Charlie. So are you saying that when she <laughs> took over the show, they actually gave it to her? So this wasn't like a separate incident where Sherry got a show. Wow. They ended up turning into the Sherry show. Wow. I, I literally uh, thought that uh, Sherry was taking over, but then Wendy's show just ended and Sherry just got a brand new show. So she basically took over that show and then they named, renamed it. Yeah. Okay. So they took her fan base. They took her fan base. See, they stripped... I don't know who the hell doing this to that sister. I don't know what the hell, girl. I don't know, girl. I don't know what you have did. I don't know what the hell, but to get mistreated like that, and then they milking your funds and got your funds froze. You can't get access to your money, but everybody else can spend your money. Then your kid, you know, your son, he, he, I don't know what the hell. Then your family, they all, you know, what the hell? Like, what? I, look, man. Look, there's this girl. You got to get it right. And you got to get it all the way right, or you is just through Magoo because you too old for them shenanigans and and and, and, and bullshit. Come on now, you get uh, yeah, foolishness and fuckery. You just you just just blind. You just floating away with a drink in your hand. Fuck that. <laughs> no, nah, ain't about to do all that. It's a time and a place for everything. It's a time to celebrate. It's okay, but damn you you. Using that as a form of uh, an excuse to go talk, come on, you depressed. It ain't that much depression in the world. Well, I'm going to let somebody or anybody take control of my money. That ain't happening. Well, let's watch this little clip real quick. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I'm good. Everybody hit me, please. Okay. Would you have taken Wendy to a meeting? Would you have taken Wendy to a meeting with NBC about a talk show in that condition? 
that publicist did. Another king of daytime, Steve Wilkos, was deeply hurt when he saw the Wendy doc. Steve was a frequent guest host for Wendy Williams, and he knew Wendy well. He posted this on his widely seen TikTok account. What they're showing is somebody is not protecting her. Um, it doesn't put her in a good light. I don't see how this serves any purpose at all. One, uh, her manager talking about, is she ready to do a podcast? She's ready. She's been doing this for 20 years. She's no position to do anything, interviewing. She should not be interviewing anybody. I got to tell you, I was disturbed and I'm saddened by, I feel people uh, using her. Um, they're, not, they're not protecting her. And Steve Wilkos joins me now live. Um, Steve, it's really good of you to, to be on the program with me. I just want to get your, your first reactions when you watch the documentary. You know, I was really surprised because I didn't even know it was coming out. And uh, my wife and I were just flipping through channels and we came across it. And I was absolutely shocked. Um, you know, a lot of people, when I posted that TikTok, a lot of people said, oh, this is karma. She would talk about celebrities in a bad way, and she was mean. That's that's nonsense. Uh, like you you said in your opening statement that uh, Wendy's a wonderful person. Um, we in show business, with the shows that we type to do, we're to entertain. We're not going to be bumps on the lawn. You better have a personality for people to watch. And that's what Wendy did. Listen, I don't even watch daytime talk. You know, this is my job. I, I don't follow it. But I was a big fan of Wendy because – I'd been on her show. I was on her radio show when I got launched. She always made me feel real comfortable. She made me, whether she really believed it or not, uh, that she was, you know, champion for me. Okay, y'all. I'm going to ask all of y'all. And since Lo, I know this is one topic she wanted to discuss tonight. I'ma ask all of y'all, why do y'all think the people in her corner allows this documentary to be made? Because like Steve Wilco say, I'm in agreement with him. They up there talking about we didn't realize that she was really as bad off, or that she was really as sick, or that she was really you know, when we was doing this video. And then the whole time I watching it, her, uh, what's that dude that's real close to her? Talking about we getting ready for her podcast. Y'all getting ready for her podcast and she's sitting up there looking like she got, I mean, like, I don't even want to talk about her illness. I'm not going to do they're, that. They are not of money. Not well at Oh, the scenes where her eyes was just bugging all the way out her head and it looked like she had no personality, like she didn't even know where she was, like she was just lost in the sauce. And y'all talking about we get her ready for her podcast? It was money. It was all about money. Yeah, I that, think that same guy was her was a executive producer of that. So he got mm. paid for that. And they're collecting money and the family is exploiting the exploiters. And they're going to pay for that, too, at the end of the yeah. day, especially if you yeah. take it from and now she, She's sick with the same illness that Bruce Willis has. Exactly. When she showed yeah. her feet, I yeah. damn near was in tears. Because I know when I Williams, everybody that watched Wendy Williams know that Wendy Williams loved her some stilettos, child. Y'all know Wendy Williams loved her some stilettos. And when she picked her feet up and put her feet in the camera, I didn't even know what the lymph, lymph what is it called? Lymph, lymphedema? Lymphedema, yeah. I didn't even know what that shit was. I started researching it after I saw her feet. And I was like, and then I guess there's a a, a, a content creator in the B section named Uppity who got the same type of shit. I really didn't even know. And I didn't see people post her pictures out of fun, like mocking her and shit like that. But when I saw yeah. Wendy's Williams' feet, yeah. when I was he, like, Dang. When they had her in that car trying, and she was trying to get that vape and everything, and she kept saying, no, this ain't it. This ain't the place. And then they took her around oh, again. Yeah. So you could tell she wasn't mm -hmm. like all there when she was in that bed, passed out, 
um, and didn't even know who was who and what was what, like, bruh, like, y'all know she's an alcoholic. She's they drinking knew she wasn't in her right mind, Charlie. Like, why would you exploit mm -hmm. her like this? Like, the lady needs help. She no. don't need to be on no damn Netflix documentary looking like that. Like um, it, it's sad in me, and I and trust me, I and that like one lady, Wendy fan, but that was fucked up what her peoples did to her. That one lady who was her publicist was so oh. trying to knock the other dude out of the saddle straight up by like kissing up to Wendy and letting Wendy do whatever Wendy wanted to do mm -hmm. when she wanted to do it. She was trying to knock Will out of the saddle. She was trying to become the new manager. And then they won't let her see her family at all. Like, really? Her sister said, I take care of her for nothing. You don't have to pay me anything. Well, I just want to know that my sister as well. Miss Ronnie brought this up when we were on her panel talking about this. Um, and other people did that. Her uh, niece is actually like on TV, she's a, a newscaster. She's a her news. family's got money, they don't need her money. They don't. <laughs> And and like her, they like her employees do. Her, she said everything that I do is for my son. I don't care yes, anything about her man, skin yep. or anything. Everything I do is for him. I, she don't care nothing about what he spent. That's her only child. Exactly. And if I had only one child and I was rich, my child would have the fucking world. Well, y'all know that's her miracle baby too. If you watch the exactly. uh, that was other her thing on baby. Her. yep, that's what she called him, her miracle baby. Yep, because she lost so many and couldn't, like, after a certain point, couldn't carry baby, and he was the only one that she carried to full term, and everything. And that's the only thing that hurt her with Kevin because mm -hmm. she knew he knew what she was going through. And he, had, she had told, I don't care what you do, just don't bring me babies back. Mm -hmm. That was the breaker. And that dog did what? He brought a baby back. But see there. And then her mama passed after that. Oh, and, that she had, and then the divorce. She had a lot of downfalls before. And I think she was sick for a long time, but we just didn't really know. We didn't really know the depths of her sickness or start to know until she was the Statue of Liberty. And yeah. she, and she and, passed um, out in that green gown. Did see how, right. Did y'all see how good she looked, though, when she was with her son and yes. her family? Like, she was doing so good. He had on her clean lifestyle, of vegan eating. She wasn't drinking, because he would give her, like, the non-alcoholic, so she thought she was still getting something. You yeah, know he, what I'm saying? He even, told, he even told her assistant, and, and, you know, the guy who... What is the guy's name who's doing the show with her? Who's there? Her Talking friend? Will? Will, yeah, he was even telling, don't you let her drink, don't you get her no alcohol, don't you let, and you can't really, if somebody wants to get some drugs or alcohol, they gonna get it, right? Like mm -hmm. Michael Jackson, like Whitney Houston, we can go on and on and on, right? If they want it, they gonna get it. But my thing was, when it comes to children, okay, a lot of us are not rich or wealthy. So, of course, we expect our children to work, Get out there and make it how get it in the mud, like I did, right? But if you have one child and you are filthy rich, and your child ain't out here doing drugs, he out here robbing people, killing people, you know, it seems like a decent kid. You have one child and you have all this money. You saw how she was with him. Okay, you need this, you need new clothes, you need a car, you need this, you need that. And that was her miracle baby as well. Like Girl, some people would think it was, think it was harsh if a parent was to say, okay, I got $50 million. I don't want exaggerating, okay? I'm just saying, I got $50 million. I want you to go out there and get a job. I, I ain't getting you shit. Make it how, get it how you make it. But most people who would be in that situation would make sure their child don't want for shit. But now they're trying to make like her son was trying to take all her money when we mm -hmm. even know from watching her over the years that she would do anything for her son. So I don't understand why the fact that they are trying to control her fucking money. This ain't no Britney shit, okay? Do not 
think that these are two of the same situations. Not y'all, but I'm just saying. This is not the Britney Spears situation when we talk about Wendy Williams. Go ahead. Mm -mm. I'm just in agreement with everything you're saying. I'm really sad at this, though, and I wasn't even like a major fan of hers. But to see yeah. her, y'all, if I ever, God forbid, if I ever lose my mind, get sick, anything like that, please don't have my sons put me up here on YouTube looking all crazy. <laughs> like, come up here and kick their ass. Bro, come up here and kick their ass and take the whole internet away. Mm. Like, I'm so serious. Because what they doing to her, it, it's, it's just downright despicable. It's and then so to act bad. like, oh, she's ready for a podcast. Yeah, we give us a few more weeks. Give us a few more months. We working on this. We getting our podcast together. Podcast where? She can't it's even so stay up long enough. Without drinking alcohol and being drunk, she can't even walk on her feet. Like, like, what the fuck? Like, they up here acting like they did not know. This is the part that I hate. Y'all up here acting as if nothing was wrong with her. Or like, y'all didn't see anything wrong with her. She couldn't even carry a conversation. At much all. less do a podcast. At you all. know what I'm saying? She couldn't think properly. Like, if you listen to her, she sounded like somebody who had extreme Alzheimer's disease. Like, they forgot that they, like, her driver even said that, and he's been her driver for years. Some days she would hate him. Other days she wouldn't even know who he was. <laughs> like, how is she going to do a podcast? That's like her assistant, the one who was helping her with clothes and helping her. The one who was going to get the food for her. or and Not the food, but the uh, the vapes or whatever. They I was think like, she was this getting her alcohol, place. too. This is the place, Wendy. We go here all the time. No, go around the block. Go around the block. Go around the block. She cussing and yelling at him, and then the next day she'd be like, I'm sorry. I'm going to say this. They need to really get her away from all of those people and put her back with her family or they're going to see the the harsher thing that I don't want to say out loud and we're going to see a headline Wendy Williams isn't with us anymore oh it's coming and I hate to say that too Charlie but we all know we all know the people around her do not have her best, best interest or I mean uh, even if they have good intention um, in some ways which I don't think they do but even if let's say they had it and but she was fighting them on it, right? She's not gonna listen to them like she will her son. She's not gonna listen to them like she will her brother and her sister. You know what I'm saying? Her family. Or her niece, yeah. Yeah. She's not gonna listen to them because they're not like they're in her mind, her hired help. You know what I'm trying to say? Like they're not her family. And you definitely will treat your hired help differently than you would treat your family your family can say the truth to you and make you see it i mean if you look yep. at the, the videos of proof the the videos of when she was in florida with her family she was looking healthier she was speaking more in her right mind she was up standing up cooking she was doing things with her family you know now she's barely getting out of bed she can't hardly walk. She's drinking so much. She can't even barely stay awake half the time. She literally said it herself and nobody was listening. I'm bored. There's nothing to do here. The TV don't work. I want my family. I'm bored. All I do is stay in this house all day. She has no friends in New York. She considered Will and the publicist her friends. That's the only people she had to talk to. Yeah. That and like you were saying, sad. Charlie... You are saying, Charlie, when it comes to your uh, the people who work for you, you can run them or they can leave and you can bring a new one in, right? Mm -hmm. With your family, we're going to tell you how T.I. is. Whether you get mad, whether you get pissed off, whether you walk out the motherfucking door, we're going to tell you you ain't getting no liquor here. You better drink some Kool-Aid or some water, some Hawaiian punch, some tea, some something. With paid employees, you make them do what the fuck you want them to do. And if they don't, you fire their ass 
and you hire someone else. That's so why I agree yes, man. that she needs to be around her family. Yes. Somebody That's who they ain't taking care of her. He talking yeah. about, well, I try to hide all the bottles in the house. I try to make sure you saw him looking through all the cabinets, looking through uh -huh. the bathroom, looking through the if somebody really wants drugs and alcohol, they gonna get it. And you mean to tell me you look through her whole motherfucking house and you didn't see no liquor bottles? She is laying there in bed every day with a whole motherfucking gallon of liquor. That's why I think the publicist was trying to knock Will out because she is a yes man for Wendy. Whatever Wendy tells her to do, she does it. And because she's afraid to get fired, she does whatever Wendy wants her to do. And so that's why Wendy likes her more than Will sometimes. Because that lady, I believe, is the one that is going to get her liquor for her and the things Probably that she so. wants. Because she's Probably. trying to not, she wants the money. You get what I'm saying? She ain't worried about Wendy. She didn't, you know what I'm saying? And that's she's like, Wendy's got it part. under control. She knows she's not a drinker. Bullshit. <laughs> that's the saddest part. This is just like if any of us was in uh, a nursing home and we got somebody caring for us mm -hmm. and we know that we got so much money in our bank account or whatnot, but this person is telling us, you need this and you need that and you need this. Oh, you want to buy this and that and this? Okay, let me go ahead and get it for you. And they going out, they buying the shit we really don't need and also putting a little bit in their pocket as well. Mm -hmm. It's the same situation. These are things that you have to look out for when you are a family and you have people in these elderly nursing homes or you have people who come to their houses, you have to stay up on that shit. You have to make sure there's somebody over their bank account and things like that to make sure they're not being taken advantage of. I really do think her son has the best interest for her. And I don't know him personally, but I really do think that maybe him and maybe her niece, you know, probably has, yeah. you know, the best interest for her. But Absolutely. why they do. don't they allow the family to be involved? Cislo, Charlie, bro, do any of y'all know why the family they, is not the ones? They had, um, the son did have, um, you know, a uh, power of attorney over his mother and all that. The bank stepped in because they said that um, $100,000 was, was spent. I remember that. Yeah. Yep. They not only took the, now, I maybe could see the financial part taken from them maybe and have somebody looking over it to make sure you know her assets stay good and that she has enough to live off of for the rest of her life maybe and make sure story. her son isn't abusing yeah. his yeah. yeah but they also didn't only just take that they took their medical rights to her yep. where they can't get her medical help that's the part that makes me go wait a minute now you yep. took away them not being able to make medical decisions for her her next of kin, her son, her sister, her family. This is strange. I've never seen this before, knowing she was doing very well in Florida. And but they her did sister it. has the right to make medical decisions. Yeah, that that's like no, see, she has an overseer that's not the assistant and all that. It's not but where the hell is the really? overseer that was making this documentary? He the talks just to the person the that's taking care of her, though. That's the crazy part. The judge. Say that, well, babe, say that again, babe. Say that again. All of the people that are extorting her are the people that the judge selected. Oh. Yeah, so she's that's a court appointed uh, person. Sorry, Sisla. Go ahead, Sisla. Oh, no, that was it. Oh. Yeah. Okay, I was making sure I didn't cut you off on that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so she you is said a since though, the judge appointed the the guardian. overseer, and who else? Like she has one guardian. At first, it was somebody that worked for the bank, and they said yeah. that was a conflict of interest. Now mm -hmm. they have somebody else that they won't release the name to. Even even the family doesn't even know this person. Oh wow! One that one that's overseeing her care, and the other one overseeing her finances. So if that person doesn't say she can have this, this, or this, then she don't get it. The other person, no, the person her, who's over over caring over how do you say it? The person who's overseeing, overseeing her, her care, care 
How do you think she keep getting all this liquor? Exactly, Yara. Exactly, Yara. Well, y'all heard that the sister sister was. bought bought her vape and bought her plane tickets. I wonder if she's thinking that she can get paid back by the financial advisor because here's the thing. She may try to sue Wendy eventually for all the stuff that she's bought for Wendy, right? But the financial advisor can then say, well, we didn't tell you to buy those things for Wendy. You get what I'm saying? That may be something we see in the near future. I just... I, I swear to God, I ain't, I was not really a big Whitney, w- Wendy, what's well, that Whitney, Wendy fan when she was, when she had her, you know, syndicated talk show, you know, she was, she's world known. I would tune in her sometimes, you know, people like, girl, did you see the Wendy Williams show? You know, just like in the B sector sometimes. You don't know, subscribe to somebody, but if you hear something, hit the fan. Girl, did you hear what happened on such and such? You know, I would go over there and watch certain things, but I really wish the best for Wendy because being sick is one thing. Having dementia is one thing. Having lymphedema is one thing. All these different things that she's going through. Being an alcoholic is one thing. But to have somebody exploit you, which I really think is going on right now with her camp, her circle, to be exploited. And you know they're exploited. How do you know they're exploiting her? Because every single person in this goddamn documentary, I didn't know that she was this sick. I didn't know she was that bad off. Like, look at her foots. Just look at her foots. She can't even barely walk. She's wearing what kind of boots? Oh, it, it's a hundred degrees outside, and she's wearing some motherfucking Uggs or some motherfucking boots. They gotta be like full of fur and, and all kind of shit because her feet. Just to look at her feet just make me feel pain. Why don't they have her seeing a podiatrist for that? I don't know what's going on. Like we ain't seen her have one appointment with a podiatrist. We ain't seen her have. I think we seen her talk to like a therapist, right? Yeah. Other than that, we ain't seen no doctor's appointments. We ain't seen no podiatrist. We ain't you know, seen she got shit that Graves like that. disease too. So she's right. got a the thyroid got... issue. So why we ain't seen no doctor visits? Why we ain't seen no doctors coming to see her? But Wait. we got her out here at a motherfucking vape up here telling motherfuckers they ain't at the right spot. She got people over here uh fighting her over liquor. We got, I mean, all these. You know they uh, put her in one of those facilities recently and they're supposed to be selling her apartment and buying a new one, but that is yet to come to pass. So Wendy's basically staying in a care home right now. And who took the money for the apartment? That's... I don't know. They're saying she ain't got like 100,000 left in the bank from 50 million to 100,000. And that's why she had millions and Mm -hmm. they are showing the worst parts of her on this documentary. The worst parts of her. They're not showing anybody really helping her. Mm-hmm. They showed the family trying, but then they took her away from them. Like, why would you take her away from the only people that are going to be there for her and care for her? That just don't make no sense to me. I'm sorry, but I have to intervene with this one. But if I go from $50 million per se, and y'all talking about that, my loved one only got 100000 after that, no, nah, it's about to be some cold cases. Sorry. I don't blame you, bro. It'd be the same no way with me. The There's no way in the world I'm going to let you steal $50 million from a loved one. And leave yeah. it with her. I'm not. I don't care who you. Are. I don't care how powerful you think that you are. That trust me. Mm-mm. There's not. There's not a law in this land that will save your ass from becoming a skeleton. Nope. Because it's you're not really, gonna steal. You're not gonna steal. You're not gonna steal from somebody. I mean, I don't care what what it is. I mean, you know, if they, even even I don't even believe that people that are mortal enemies would do something 
to their opposition that's it's bad like to that to me that is something like a personal that's like a a personal vendetta to destroy someone's life until a point to where they's like they're like starting from scratch just like that just like their like their monthly habits that's all you left them with is like a month to live on that might cost that woman that uh, 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 that might be her monthly, you know, what she have to survive on. Now, her apartment that they're trying to sell right now, it's in the, it's a two story in the middle of New York. That exactly. ap apartment will go for millions of dollars. Exactly. Possibly in the billions, because depending on exactly where it's located. Uh, my fiance's house in Long Island went for four hundred thousand, and that house down here in Mississippi wouldn't have been, but two hundred and something. You know what I'm saying? But mm -hmm. up there, it goes for a lot more. Like they can go for his mom and dad's house could go for almost a mil. Cause it's about space. They don't have space up like like you know. Mm -hmm. And when it's in those good neighborhoods and the fancy places and stuff like that, they got apartments for rent that are like. A bathroom in your kitchen and everything's like so compacted it's like a closet mm -hmm. a thousand a month for rent mm -hmm. so right imagine right. what that's gonna sell for <laughs> but where's the money though you know what i'm saying <laughs> who got yeah. the money is what i want to know y'all know where the money is that is the ones that's around you mm -hmm. i think some family involved too but still even family i don't give a damn you're not gonna steal no 50 million dollar and then think that you're just gonna make a documentary about it and exploit my love it ain't nothing going down nope i agree bro i think i think if mm -hmm. the money is missing really i think it's just not her employees i think it might be family involved too I think oh, they need bank, to I'm talking about bank executive trustees, all that. Yeah, they, they, yeah, this might be some cold cases. Sorry. They need to do an investigation, in my opinion, and have an outside source from the bank, someone that's not associated with that bank whatsoever, look into it. The family needs to push this, and they can, because something strange is happening for her money to just be liquidated that quickly. I, be, I bet you when a couple of folks' heads come up, spit like watermelons, I bet you they get to talking in. Somebody going to say something because the judge and them and the insurance companies ain't going to want to cover them type of situations. Like, hold on, man. This is this is becoming a heavyweight type of high, highlighted case. Yeah, because then the feds going to really get involved. Hold on, man. These, these people are, they, whoever doing this, they not playing. So I would advise y'all to get the leaders and woman money alone and get her and get and get her back into the proper care that she needs. Because for somebody to specifically take away your medical rights as your pop gun to initiate a power of attorney to take away the family medical rights to you yeah that's something that's some that's some wicked shit somebody that has something planned out for that woman for a long time and they know most of her moves i guarantee you it's somebody that's very very close to it i can i can point my finger to it don't know exactly who it is but i bet you and one of the family members is involved in it on as well they when she was down in florida um with her family uh, when she was taking her rest from the Wendy Williams show and they had other people guest starring before they took it away and gave it to Sherry um, before they canceled her show. And I did it in quotation because, you know, they took it from her and gave it to her. But anyway, um, they did the power of attorney. They took away his power of attorney and froze her assets and uh, appointed her a guardianship within the matter of weeks. She had to fly back to New York from Florida because she was ordered to. Mm -hmm. So, so and, and the bank themselves is the one that took over. Yeah. Wells right. Fargo. Now, yeah, why I'm she's sure. using Wells Fargo and not a, they got a dang good in New York, a dang good um, uh, no banking way. system. It's a federal credit union called Beth Page. Why she wasn't using that was using the other. I don't know. I'm <laughs> way, man, like I said. That exactly whoever it was that had that power and said that, and the judge need to be hung too because the judge should know better. You're in a position to make the rightful uh, the, uh, decision based off of the evidence. You're just somebody paid that judge 
because mm-hmm. that's who need to, that that judgment should have been overturned. That's what they need to do. They need to summon that, that they need to summon that funky ass judge. Because and all the people is, called. How y'all gonna yeah, how y'all follow the paper trail? I bet you. Now, like I said, somebody been paying some folks off, and because there's no way in the world, I there is people that said went from asset to add, you know, to made so much money to tens of millions of dollars in their career. And hardly don't have nothing to really show for it after. I mean, they got some money, but they ain't worth them them hundred, two hundred fifty million, sixty million dollars that they was worth. They ain't worth that. But the point now is that still for you, just, man, for somebody to do something like that, and then and I mean, on top of that, they allow it to happen as though that the bank, like somebody or or an executive or somebody that's a, a trustee over your money or your account, that's like a, a basic bank teller having the power to go and put a motion in at the court for a power of attorney over you because of the way that you like to say if you're getting decent amount of money in your account every month. I'm and glad like, you got me staring at us like this though. No. No. <laughs> but you know what? I, let me, I'm sorry, bro. Let me say this real quick. Ahead. Go ahead. This is something else that I didn't tell you all. Okay, so you know Suzanne, the girl, the lady that was the um the producer uh, on the show, the one that was directing the people to, to clap, and she was always saying, Suzanne, what do you think about this and that? You know, her husband killed himself after it uh it came up that some money had been missing from the Wendy Williams show that was unaccounted for, and it was like monthly rent money and a bunch of stuff like that was missing it was unaccounted for it and he his name was mentioned in an investigation and he, he killed himself about two weeks ago well did y'all hear about her um uh, her uh guardian sabrina who was still for who was sued for stealing 30 million dollars from another person under her guardianship did y'all hear about mm-hmm. that See what I'm saying? Like I said, this 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 guardianship lady or whoever they are, they would not be no longer. They ain't gonna. Have, you're not gonna steal that kind of and think you. You know you are gonna catch a Bernie Madoff treatment. That's what you are gonna get. But you ain't about to get. You ain't about to get away with. It. Yeah, she has a guardian. Well, one of her guardians, uh, her name is Sabrina Morrissey. She is being sued for stealing thirty million dollars from another person under oh, her guardianship they said wendy williams court ordered guardian was named in a 30 million dollar lawsuit that alleged that she was scamming another client as she was also controlled the wendy williams shows host finances um they said sabrina morrissey and her firm morrissey and morrissey llp as well as about 10 other lawyers was named as defendants in the lawsuit they also said the lawsuit accused Morrissey and other lawyers of conspiring to perpetuate a baseless guardianship against a New York man named Jose Verdugo, who had just been awarded $5.5 million in a personal injury claim. Mm-hmm. Attorney Michael Flomahaf of the Flomahaf Law Firm read Vertigo after he was hurt in a construction accident, sustaining injuries to his head and his back. The lawsuit was filed in November 22, and in August 2023, Verdugo's lawyers told the court that they had discontinued the above entitled action without prejudice and without cost to either party as against the other. Flomahaf is allowed to refile the charges, make changes to the claim, or move the case to a different court at a later date as long as the time frame falls within the statute of limitations. Flo behalf alleged that Vertigo was had conducted, was contacted by a former associate, Herbert Rodriguez, back in 2009. And court mm-hmm. documents alleged that Rodriguez told Vertigo that Flo Mahaf had mishandled the case and that his case could not be finalized unless Vertigo consented to an MHL Article 81 guardianship that Vertigo mm-hmm. did not want or need. So this lady. This lady who represents Morrissey and Morrissey LLP, it was mm-hmm. two guardians that was appointed, Rocio Paterno 
represented by Morrissey and Vertigo's wife, Maria, from 2010 mm -hmm. to 2015. And Percival is accused Morrissey of pilfering funds from Vertigo in a separate lawsuit. The lawsuit claimed that Rodriguez and his firm initially partnered and conspired with Sabrina Morrissey, the same one who was over Wendy Williams, to impose on Vertigo and MHL, which is a mental hygiene law, Article 81 guardianship. So basically what's that saying is this white lady uh, who works for Morrissey, she uh, was charged or basically there's an investigation on her for pilfering money through another client. And she was also at the same exact time over Wendy Williams' estate. Ain't that crazy? And, and ain't nobody, once again, ain't nobody made no motion to go and overturn the judge's order. And the judge should be subpoenaed because actually a judge can be a judge can be uh, uh, held accountable too. Yes, you sure can. There's a certain form of legal fellow, yeah, that had that case uh, switched to a, uh, for a third party appeal or appeal. yeah, appellations cause appeal. Yeah, they but uh, somebody she stole did, thirty million, y'all. Yeah, she stole no, that lady. Yeah, she would be unalive. Yeah. I'm sorry, <laughs> she would be unalive. There's That's no a lot of money, y'all. Thirty million from another mm -hmm. person under her guardianship, that and that was at the same time no. that she was guardian over Woody Williams. Like I said, the judge and this woman, it would be, it would be, uh, well, I guess, I guess, but that's where it's gonna go down. No ma'am. you get away with thirty with one of the year, you and the judge is in cahoots too. It'll and be that was their whole LLC. That was the whole company. I'm sure she didn't take that $30 million by herself. It probably was a conspiracy, the whole company. Oh, yeah. And everybody was involved with that. Follow the money. I guarantee Everybody you got paid. Money. Follow the money. Everybody got paid. So we don't know for sure if the conspirators of this money thing or money stealing or guardianship uh, Every, well, it's she, just from people who are family related or yeah. from people who are just hired to be. But we'll yeah. find out soon. And yeah, I really yeah, do yeah, hope yeah, Wendy more. Williams doesn't succumb her uh, illnesses anytime soon. I really, really don't because I, <clears throat> excuse me, with everything that's going on with her, with the divorce, with her husband remarrying his miss, I mean, marrying his mistress, with all these people mishandling her money, stealing yeah, from her, crazy. and everything like that. Yeah. This has to take a toll on somebody who's already has addictions, right? Yeah. That's childish as hell. You're already addicted to drugs, you're already addicted to alcohol, and then all this shit is going on, and you can't see your family. Like one thing she kept saying in her documentary, I just want to see my son. I want to be with my family. I want to leave my legacy to my son. All this money I make is for my son. She's literally telling them, this is for my son. No, it don't matter. You're going to leave your son with nothing. Your son will have, they basically say your son will have to start from the trenches. You ain't going to have no money because your funeral going to cost about $100,000. So you ain't going to leave with nothing. If they keep pilfering through her shit, all these other people, she ain't going to have nothing to leave her son. Exactly. That's why I say there's nowhere in the world. I'm not, me as a man, I, I can't sit around and watch nobody. I don't care if it's family or not, or court or not, just somebody. Somebody's going to pay the troll his toll. Simple and plain. You're not going to steal and literally pilferate and court order my ass. I bet you, I, like I said, I, I, I bet you when you get some, you folks, folks get some soup diets and in some shit bags, I, I bet. I bet you. I bet you start talking in. I bet you some money to start uncoughing, and I bet you some cases start getting turned. I bet you. Don't forget some shit bags. <laughs> I guarantee you, because ain't nobody want no soup guys and shit bags. I'm telling you that. No, that's not. Yeah, because you intentionally destroy somebody. Like what? What gives you a right to, to try to destroy somebody's life and scan other people out of stuff, and that there's just no repercussions and consequences. Man, there's people out here that will literally take your life over a, a simple goddamn me dice game, five ten dollar miss roll, twenty dollars, but you're stealing millions, and you're getting away with it. Nah, bro. No. Mm -mm. Well, child, 
Any last thing you want to say about this, sis, Lord Charlie? That's sad. That's really, really sad. Man. The whole situation is sad. To watch somebody right in front of your eyes go from, uh, you know, a boisterous person, you know, a, like a, a, a powerhouse to literally what she is now is just sad to see and to see the family fighting, having to fight about her health, having to fight about all this and and then institutions taking over her money and she can't even like go buy a piece of candy at the store without asking somebody if she can. You know what I'm saying? I can yeah, kind of understand it a little bit to like in some sense, but at the same time, I'm like, eh, you know what I mean? <laughs> That's not right. They do period. I mean, you know, they, they, they say it ain't always about right or wrong. No, it is. That's that's the only thing it's about is right or wrong. You not that's wrong. Simple and plain. You know, I mean, like I said, she unless she didn't did something equally dirty to someone on that level, I don't believe it's nobody. You don't just you don't that's something that's like I said, that's a vendetta. That's something oh, I'm gonna get you. Oh, you just don't know. I'm gonna. It's like that's 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 a snake in the that's a that's a snake in the bush. I Move. think that if uh that Wendy's family needs to hire an attorney to uh make them because they can do this via court. They can make them share all of the court documentation of every penny of her money that was spent and where. Right, itemize. Yeah, it's, a, it's an yes. itemized, uh, statement. That, 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 they got to itemize everything. That means that everything has to be accountable for every damn thing from a toll, a toll charge with a vehicle that's registered in her name off the place that's being read off of the doggone toll bridge cameras when they passing through to get the the the, the account bill to everything. That all has to be accountable. I want. I'm talking about. I want to know. How much the glue cost for that bootleg wig that she got on? No, you didn't oh say bootleg God. wig. You know what? I'm about to play this video real quick, and then we're going to wrap this up. But a lot of people don't know what's all wrong with Wendy Williams, and that's why I'm going to play this clip. And I think uh, Cislo was referring to this earlier when they was talking about Bruce Willis. But um, everybody hit mute. It's a three-minute video. Williams team says she has been diagnosed with primary progressive aphasia and frontotemporal dementia. These are conditions associated with changes in behavior, communication, and personality. Now, if this sounds familiar, it may be because back in 2022, actor Bruce Willis was diagnosed with aphasia, which has progressed to frontotemporal dementia. The announcement comes just days before the premiere of a lifetime documentary about Williams' physical and mental health. That is set to air this weekend. For more on this, we want to bring in Dr. Romy Mushtaq. She's the neurologist and chief wellness officer at Great Wolf Resorts. Dr. Mushtaq, thanks for being with us. She's also the author of the book, The Busy Brain Cure, the eight-week plan to find focus, tame anxiety, and sleep again. Dr. Mushtaq, let's talk uh, first about just this condition in general. What are mm -hmm. some of the symptoms? And, you know, Wendy is only 59 years old. Bruce Willis was young as well. Mm -hmm. Is there a, a typical age of diagnosis? Vicki, good morning. And I a heartfelt con uh, condolences out to Wendy, her loved ones, and all of her fans. Frontotemporal dementia is a form of dementia that typically happens at a younger age. Average age of diagnosis is around 45 to 65. And it's in an actual group of different types of dementia. One type can affect personality. And the type that they're saying Wendy has can affect speech, known as frontotemporal dementia with primary progressive aphasia. Right there, you can see it can affect both the frontal lobe of the brain right at the front behind mm -hmm. your forehead and the temporal lobe behind the ears as we're seeing on the brain scans here. Dr. Mushtaq, how is this disease typically diagnosed and, and how does it progress? Yeah, you know, it's not an easy diagnosis and it can take time. Sometimes the first symptoms are behavioral changes or difficulty speaking. So it's a careful clinical history. In some, there may be a family history. It is not clear with Wendy and a genetic variant as well. How it's diagnosed is by a neurologist specializing in memory with a careful physical exam as well as an MRI of the brain an additional type of imaging known as SPECT imaging that can show how glucose and other tracers are taken up in the frontal and temporal regions of the brain. 
so it often can take a long time to diagnose and can be a diagnosis of exclusion, which is mm. not easy. And doctor, what happens next? How is this treated? How does mm. someone like Wendy move forward? Sadly, Vicki, there is no actual cure for frontotemporal dementia or primary progressive aphasia. Supportive care mm -hmm. is what's needed. There, it's very common to have behavioral outbursts or mood, and there are psychiatric medications for that. Speech pathology and language pathology can help with uh, you know, prolonging the ability to use language. But the most important thing is that skilled nursing care is yeah. given to caregivers because it can be very difficult to watch a loved one so young suffer. Yeah, our best thoughts are with Wendy, her family, and her caregivers. Dr. Romy Mushtaq, thank you so much for your Basically, her family She is so young, so gifted. And I mean, oh, bro. For her to get to this point in her life where she can really enjoy the fruit of her labor, her time is being her time is being robbed from her. She has one child. She won't get to see them have children and get married. She won't get to enjoy vacations and stuff. She won't be able to do it like she says she she wants to be back on TV. It's just so many things that she could do to enjoy everything she worked so hard for. And now it's like at least Bruce Willis got to see his kids from his grandchildren. And, and you know what I'm saying? Enjoy some time with his families. I get what you're saying, Cislo. It's sad that within a few years, she's not even going to remember who her son is. And she won't be able to see her grand or she'll, she, even if she's here to see them, she won't know who they are. Basically, that kind of what they're saying is that's going to affect her almost as like dementia, like Alzheimer's, and it's going to progressively get worse. She may even become violent because they said it messes with your mood. Her speech may completely go out altogether. Um, the things that help you like cognitively be able to communicate with others may or may not go out because it affects her frontal lobe. And uh, I'm, I think that also affects your memory. Um, so she's it, it's not a good diagnosis. It's really not. And Charlie, when you said uh, violence, like when she was, when they were showing in the documentary, like the way she was talking to some of them, it is like when you say violence, like just from the way she was talking to some of them, like she was really angry, like yeah. calling them names, disrespecting them. I mean, firing them two, three times a day. Then the next day, oh, I'm sorry, did I say that? Like she would do a whole Urkel, like, did I, like she. It was like as if like she don't even remember what she remember did or what? said, but she knew she did something bad. You know what I'm saying? And so it's, when they come to the violence, I would hate to hear that vi that she did something really serious to somebody, like hitting them or you know putting them in a hospital or something like that. But we even know, like from older people, sometimes they can get in get fits of rages where you can be trying to help them or help them to use the bathroom or change their clothes or feed them, and they will get into a fit of rage, and they could hurt somebody seriously. Now, I was the only one when my grandmother got older that, like, she would listen to. She wouldn't try to fight, and she wouldn't try to, like, be angry. I was the only one. Like, my grandmother saw, this is, this is not racism, 40 Mexicans crossing my lake like the Rio Grande to get to her house. Or that's what she thought she saw. If my dad would have said, hey, that's not what happened, mom, she would have fought him on it. But because it was me, I was like, Granny, you know, there wasn't that many people out there in my backyard without me knowing it. She was like, yeah, you're right. She said my son was playing in her front yard by himself. My son had, would never have done that at the age that she was claiming that first off. And I was like, Granny, you know, I would have been out here with him. I was like, you know that one. I was the only one that could talk sense into her. So right now with her, it's 
I believe in my heart of hearts, the only person that'll be able to get through to Wendy when she has those problems probably would be her son. Her son. Yep. I agree. Because she's going to fight anybody else. But the person you love the most, you won't fight as much. Like my grandmother had her moments and hers was alcohol induced like Wendy's. And when she would drink too much, that's why I, I, I'm the one that got her away from the alcohol. I'm the only one that could. You know what I'm saying? And he's probably the only one that's going to be able to deal with this. What you have to do with an alcoholic, instead of like saying, no, you can't have this because they're in a dementia phase, you pretend you're giving it to them and it's not even alcohol, it's grape juice. We did see that, right? <laughs> we did see that. Yeah. Sensual. Did we see that when they were? she was at a bar or something? She was somewhere at a bar or restaurant and Will, is that his name? Will, her assistant mm -hmm. or he yeah, said, uh, he went up to the bartender and said, don't give her that. Give her something else. A non-alcoholic. And Wendy was really up there drinking the stuff. Like, you know. You have to make them think so, yeah, we did see that. or they'll get violent. You get what I'm saying? Like, there's ways that you can do it, and then, like, if you know their flavor. <laughs> yeah. Well, they they sometimes do, but a lot of times, like, if you get like if they if they like uh, beer and stuff, you can get those non-alcoholics, and because they have the same fizziness and stuff, they they don't really notice it as much. You just have to like sneak one in on them if that makes sense. <laughs> like, <laughs> water it down a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Um. But the, I, I eventually talked her into completely, she didn't even touch alcohol the last few years in her life. And I did notice she was a little bit better. And I said this on Running IQs and I got read to filth on Lipstick Alley for this. But I did, when she was going through all this and her Alzheimer's and stuff, I did a, um, research. And um, they say if you take coconut oil, about a shot glass full it starts to and it's a study there's a lady who actually did it who was a doctor um that it can help reverse the signs of dementia now it's not been proven fully 100 percent. let me say that because they got my buffer not saying i'll run the queue because i'll be too quiet but she had her husband had severe alzheimer's disease and he did the clock test at first, he couldn't even put the numbers on the clock correctly. He could only draw lines, and the lines looked like they were all over the place. And as time progressed, um, and she also changed his diet, there's other things you have to put into place. Because what dementia is, is it eats away at the fats in your brain and starts eating away at the tissue. So you have to add, like, fat, certain fatty good foods for you, like superfoods and stuff, and the coconut oil. And it puts those back. So his progression started getting better and better. And he could actually do the clock test. He was back reading again. He could comprehend things better. His speech got better. Um, there was one company when I did this that they took and they found the compound that's directly in the coconut oil. And they did, in their mind, this is what they said in the study, they created a cure. But they couldn't get anybody to back them to mass produce it. That was what I did in a speech. I did a speech class. We did an informative speech. I did the research on all that. I even shared it to my community wall. The lady who, this doctor lady who, you know, did all that. She did speeches on it and everything. Well, we all know how it goes when it comes to some of these medicines. Like way back in the day when there was the AIDS pandemic and, you know, different things like that. Uh, people always thought that. Yeah, they got a cure. Even with certain cancers. Yeah, they got a cure. But because of how much money they can make with treatment, being hospitalized, people having surgeries, and all this kind of other stuff, you know, yeah. when it comes to these uh, cures, we might not ever see them. Like, not ever see them marketed. Mm -hmm. That is very true. I, and it's I said, sad to think that that's the case. It really is sad. Like, look at all the people of AIDS that died of HIV and AIDS. That it was millions. I said that to try to like help because you never know. Like, if it does work, 
and it helps people. You know what I'm saying? I'd rather try to help as much as I can, but I got read to feel on lipstick alley girl. <laughs> oh, but you know what? I mean, I, it, it's cool because a lot of times when they do come out with something that does work, a lot of times the ADA won't even approve it. And sometimes, you know, people, it'd be like a, a trial or something like that. And then eventually, after so many years or whatever, they'll finally approve it. And hopefully it won't be too late for a lot of people because that was just like with the pandemic back in the 80s and the 90s with HIV and AIDS. Like people were waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. And sometimes they, they couldn't hang long enough. You know what I'm saying? And then these new developments came, new developments came and, uh, you know, figured out. But see, a lot of people still believe that it was just like with the uh, Rona, that it was purposely put into something or someone. Yep to spread a pandemic and people still feel the same way about, you know, oh, it was over there in Africa. That's where the AIDS come from. And da, 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 da. people over there doing this, doing that. And a lot of people still believe that it was inserted purposely into someone or something. They talk about it came from gorillas or monkeys or something like that. And that's how people got it. And then they say the same thing about the Rona. Oh, it came from snakes and bats and different things like that. And that's how people got it. Yeah, there there's so many conspiracies on different things. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Um, but no, the way I look at it with the coconut oil, if you can add that to your diet, it ain't gonna hurt you anyway. It ain't gonna do nothing but add uh nutrients to your body. <laughs> yeah, but with anything, but with anything But I say alleged. Uh exactly. <laughs> Always seek we are diet. not medical professionals here. <laughs> exactly. Always seek the guidance, whether that's the flu, whether that's the peacock, whether that's herpes, whether that's anything else. Always seek Don't the guidance of like your nature, personal boy. medical provider and get um, consultation from your personal medical provider. We but other than that, everybody, please make sure you like and share the video. Subscribe to the hood table. If you feel inclined to hit the cash app, hit the cash app. Hit the quan on us. Hit the cash app. Dollar sign, the hood table, 402. And as far as uh, Charlie, she does have her cash app on her, uh, on her, uh, under her name. And that says dollar sign, Charlie. And Child, yeah, yeah, my glasses. That's too small. You said it's what? It's Charlie Ann 87. Okay, Charlie Ann 87. Because I'm up here looking for my glasses. Like, ooh, that's small print. I'll be forgetting that you can make your name and then you can also put like a subtitle underneath your name on here on Stream Yard. Stay safe, be blessed, remain vigilant at all times, and always remember to yeah, keep, keep it good. Bust them down, T. Press them doggone teeth, like my brother said. Love you too, Corio. Mm -hmm. Appreciate you, boo. We get with you. Hit us in the background. You know how we do. All right. Later for All now. Right. Love you guys too, and keep it hood. Yeah. All right, y'all have a wonderful night. I'll talk to y'all later. All right, bye. All right, good night.